So now we're starting the second book inside this book. It's called Charoscuro. Hmm. I wonder why the author, Kate DiCamillo, split the, this big book into little books. Let's find out. Chapter 16 is called Blinded by the Light. As our story continues, readers, we must go backward in time to the birth of a rat, a rat named Charoscuro and called Roscuro, a rat born into the filth and darkness of the dungeon several years before the mouse Despereau was born upstairs in the light. Readers, do you know the definition of the word chiaroscuro? If you look in your dictionary, you will find that it means the arrangement of light and dark, darkness and light together. Rats do not care for light. Roscuro's parents were having a bit of fun when they named their son. Rats have a sense of humor. Rats, in fact, think that life is very funny. And they're right, readers. They are right. In the case of Chiaroscuro, however, the joke had a hint of prophecy to it. For it happened that when Roscuro was a very young rat, he came upon a great length of rope on the dungeon floor. And what have we here? said Roscuro. Being a rat, he immediately began to nibble at the rope. Stop that, boomed a voice, and a great hand came out of the darkness and picked up the rat by his tail and held him suspended upside down. Were you nibbling on Gregory's rope, rat? Who wants to know, said Roscuro, for even upside down he was still a rat. You smart alecky rat, you smart alecky rat, nib nib nibbling on Gregory's rope. Gregory will teach you to mess with his rope. And keeping Roscuro upside down, Gregory lit a match with the nail of his thumb, and then held the brilliant flame right in Roscuro's face. Ah! said Roscuro. He pulled his head back away from the light, but Alas, he did not close his eyes, and the flame exploded around him and danced inside him. Has no one told you the rules? said Gregory. What rules? Gregory's rope is off limits. So? Apologize for chewing on Gregory's rope. I will not, said Roscuro. Apologize. No. Filthy rat, said Gregory, ya black sword thing. Gregory has had it with your rats. He held the match closer to Roscuro's face, and a terrible smell of burnt whiskers rose up around the jailer and the rat. And then the match went out, and Gregory released Roscuro's tail. He flung him back into the darkness. Don't ever touch Gregory's rope again, or you will be sorry. Roscuro sat on the dungeon floor. The whiskers on the left side of his face were gone. His heart was beating hard, and though the light from the match had disappeared, it danced still before the rat's eyes, even when he closed them. Light, he said aloud, and then he whispered the word again, light. From that moment forward, Roscuro showed an abnormal, inordinate interest in illumination of all sorts. He was always in the darkness of the dungeon, on the lookout for light, the smallest glimmer, the teeniest shimmer. His rat soul longed inexplicably for it. He began to think that light was the only thing that gave life meaning, and he despaired that there was so little of it to be had. He finally voiced the sentiment to his friend, a very old, one-eared rat named Botticelli Ramorso. I think, said Roscuro, that the meaning of life is light. Light, said Botticelli. <laughs> you kill me. Light has nothing to do with it. What does it all mean then, said Roscuro? The meaning of life, said Botticelli, is suffering, specifically the suffering of others. Prisoners, for instance, reducing a prisoner to weeping and wailing and begging is a delightful way to invest your existence with meaning. As he spoke, Botticelli swung from the one extraordinary long nail on his right front paw a heart-shaped locket. He had taken the locket from a prisoner and hung it on a thin braided rope. Whenever Botticelli spoke, the locket moved back and forth, back and forth it swung. Are you listening? Botticelli said to Roscuro. I'm listening. Good, 
said Bonicelli. Do as I say, and your life will be full of meaning. This is how to torture a prisoner. First, you must convince him that you are a friend. Listen to him. Encourage him to confess his sins. And when the time is right, talk to him. Tell him what he wants to hear. Tell him, for instance, that you will forgive him. This is a wonderful joke to play upon a prisoner to promise forgiveness. Why? asked Roscuro. His eyes went back and forth, back and forth, following the locket. Because, said Botticelli, you will promise it. <laughs> but you will not grant it. You gain his trust, and then you deny him. You refuse to offer the very thing he wants. Forgiveness, freedom, friendship, whatever it is that his heart most desires, you withhold. At this point in his lecture, Botticelli laughed so hard that he had to sit down and catch his breath. The locket swayed slowly back and forth and then stopped altogether. Ha 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 ha, said Botticelli. You gain his thrust, you refuse him, and you become what he knew you were all along. Would you knew you were all along, not a friend, not a confessor, not a forgiver, but ha <laughs> ha a rat. Botticelli wiped his eyes and shook his head and sighed a great sigh of contentment. He set the locket in motion again. At that point, it is most effective to run back and forth over the prisoner's feet, inducing physical terror along with the emotional sword. Oh, he said, it is such a lovely game, such a lovely game, and it is just absolutely chock full of meaning. I would like very much to torture a prisoner, said Rescuro. I would like to make someone suffer. Your time will come, said Botticelli. Currently, all the prisoners are spoken for, but another prisoner will arrive soon. How do I know this to be true? Because, Roscuro, thankfully, there is evil in the world, and the presence of evil guarantees the existence of prisoners. So, soon there will be a prisoner for me? Yes, said Botticelli Remorso. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Ha, ha, ha. Of course you are looking forward to it. You are looking forward to it because you are a rat, a real rat. Yes, said Roscuro, I am a rat. Concerned not at all with the light, said Botticelli. Concerned not at all with the light, repeated Roscuro. Botticelli laughed again and shook his head. The locket suspended from the long nail in his paw swung back and forth, back and forth. You, my young friend, are a rat, exactly. Yes, evil, prisoner. Rats, suffering, it all fits together so neatly, so sweetly. Oh, it is a lovely world, a lovely, dark world. And that's the end of the chapter. So we met a new character, a couple new characters. What's, a, what's the rat's name? Yeah, Roscuro. And it says that he was born before Despero was born upstairs. Where was Roscuro born? Yeah, he was born in the dungeon where it's very dark. And what happened when Roscuro chewed on Gregory's rope? Yeah, Gregory picked him up and lit a match in his face. And that showed him what? Light. And then it said that Roscuro couldn't stop seeing the light and he just really wanted to find light in the dungeon. Hmm. What is his friend Botticelli Ramorso like? He does not seem very nice. What does he like to do? Yeah, he likes to torture the prisoners by pretending to be their friend and then taking something away from them. Oh my goodness. So it sounds like this whole second book is going to be all about Roscuro. All right, let's keep going.